Okay, so in this video, I'm going to talk about the TORS X screens, those four screens that you see right now, what they are, what they are not, how to use them, and what are the advantages and disadvantages. Before we start, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's video, which is PCBWay. And if you use the link in the description, you can get 10 PCBs for free, only paying for shipping. You can also get CNC machining, 3D printing, and other services. So let's jump back to our video. So the TORS X screens are screens for showing PC statistics, like all the kinds of temperatures and usages, frequencies, fan speeds, but even the download speeds or the current day and time. And the idea is that you put those screens inside your custom PC case, but that doesn't have to be the case. So I have four screens and I've already recorded a video how to create a custom theme for the black one. You should definitely watch it if you haven't watched it already, but there are only three types of screens. The smaller one, which is a 3.5 inch, the bigger one, which is 5 inch, and the round one, which is 2.1 inch. So I've told you what those screens are, but I think that it makes sense to talk about what those screens are not. So those screens are not external displays. They cannot be used as external displays because there is no HDMI connection whatsoever. You cannot plug it to your computer and use it as a new screen. Now let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages. For me there are two big advantages. The first is the price because all the screens are pretty reasonably priced. The second big advantage is the quality of the LCD display. So all those screens are IPS displays which translates to wide viewing angles and nice colors and they are also bright enough especially for indoor usage. However there is also one disadvantage for using all those screens. So in order to use them you have to install and run a dedicated software that you have to run in the admin mode and even when I've checked for all the viruses and it's clean there is still a possible security threat. That said if you already have the screen and you don't want to run the software you still have two other options. You can use those screens to play a video or show a slideshow of images or you can use a different software because someone is developing python scripts for those displays. Unfortunately I think that for now it's only for the 3.5 inch. Now if you are fine using the provided software there is a separate application for every screen so if you want to use three different screens you have to install three different applications. But the advantage is that you can use all three screens at the same time. As for the connection, all the screens use only one cable and they connect to the USB port. However, the actual cables might vary slightly. The small screen has two USB-C connectors and you can decide which one to use based on the orientation that suits you most and there is the USB-C to USB cable provided. The similar case is for the black screen, except the bottom hole doesn't include a USB-C connector, it's just an empty hole. Also you get this fancy USB-C cable with angled connectors. However, I believe that's the old version of the 5 inch display and this white one is the new version of the 5 inch display. And not to make it complicated, actually all the displays could be both colors. So this new version of the 5 inch display has two different connectors. It has a USB-C connector, but it also has this connector. And for that you will use this cable that will connect the display directly to the motherboard. So if you are building a custom PC case, you don't have to use the USB connector on the outside of the case and then somehow put the cable inside. For the round display, the cable is already connected to the enclosure and you cannot disconnect it. And this one should also connect it directly to the motherboard. However, since I wanted to connect it to the USB port first, I had to use the old USB cable and just connect individual wires. I was quite surprised that the colors of the cables were matching, so it was fairly simple. Let's briefly talk about the individual displays. The smallest one is also the cheapest and the provided software is a little bit of a mess. But you still have a lot of teams to choose from for both the horizontal and vertical directions. Once you find a team that you like, press the run button and it will take about 2 or 3 seconds to update the background picture for the display, but after that it will update every single second. When the team is running you cannot really change anything in there, so you have to stop it before you're doing any changes, including setting the brightness. By the way, if you set the brightness, it's being set instantly to the display. Now if you can find a team that you like, everything is great, but if you want to make some changes, things get a little bit more complicated. You press the team editor button and here comes a window and probably the best way to start is to just load some predefined team and you can see properties on left side and the preview on the right side and suddenly those buttons are slightly cropped so this is the load team and this is the save team button. Now for every team you can have the background image and then the UI image which is like the overlay image and then any of those items and sub items being visible so for example CPU temperature is being displayed as a number 43. I can use the left mouse button to move this around. And of course I can use the properties to change those properties. Unfortunately, I can only use one font and only in like four different sizes, which is kind of limiting. And even for the other elements, like for example the status bars, there is not much what you can set. So again, if you like any of the predefined themes, this display is great, but if you would like to create your own theme, you have to keep in mind that the options are quite limited and hard to use. And compared to the other displays, there is one big disadvantage, and that is you cannot use the background video, so the only movement is from updating the labels and progress bars. Let's jump to the other display, which is the 5 inch one. Again, I've already recorded a video how to create a custom theme for this display, so you should check it out if you want to get more details. Immediately after starting the software, you can see that it looks much better. By the way, this is the theme from the tutorial. 
You also have a lot of teams to choose from, including both the horizontal and vertical orientation, and you can switch between those using those arrows. Now, some of those teams include a background video, but this is not being played in this preview, so you really don't see how it looks like until you actually run this on the display. Some of those teams also use a special fonts, and if you don't have those installed, you will see this warning message. By the way, those fonts are in the downloads folder, so just right click and select install. Same as with the smaller screen, if you want to run this on the display, you just click the run button, wait a second, and it will be displayed showing the live data. And same as with the smaller one, you cannot do anything while the display is running, so you have to stop it before changing the theme or doing anything else. Now this display has two memories. It has a built-in memory which is around 11 megabytes, but you can also use the SD card, and this is mainly used for storing the video files. So when you are switching themes and using maybe some of those that are using the video background, and you can really tell until you try it, but I know that for example this theme is using background video, so if I run this, you will see an error message saying that there is not enough space on your internal memory. So what you have to do is go to the device and in here select the internal video, refresh your storage and delete some of those video files that you don't really need until there is some free space on the internal memory. Of course the other option is to use the SD card and that will be probably much bigger than just 11 megabytes. Same as for the smaller screen, you can set the screen brightness using this slider and you can also rotate the screen by 180 degrees by selecting this in the menu. Now as mentioned already, some of those themes include a video background, but you can actually set the video background for any of those themes by clicking this set background button and then selecting any of those provided video files or just downloading some of your own. Inside the settings tab, you can select from which sensors to get the data, and if you insert the city, you can also get the weather forecast. The theme editing or creating new themes is still not simple, but it's much better compared to the smaller screen, so again, it's best to start with the predefined theme by clicking the load theme button, and then inside this list, you see all the elements that are being used on this screen, and you can move it around using the left mouse button, but you can also use the scroll wheel to change the font size, and also this time you can select any of the installed fonts from your PC. Some of those items are still being displayed in Chinese, but usually when you click on those, they will turn to English. Again, if you want to create a custom theme from scratch, I would suggest to watch my other video where I describe the process step by step. Let's move to the most interesting display, which is the round one. Out of those three, it's also the newest. The software is almost identical to the five inch one, except the themes are of course designed for the round display. And I have to say that quite a lot of themes look really great. Especially with the combination of the background video, which again, you don't see a preview of inside this software. If you want a different background, you can click the set background button, and there are quite a lot of videos provided with the software, so you can choose a different one, and you will actually see the preview inside this window. It's not being animated, but at least you can get a little bit of sense of how it will look like. And then you press the run button, wait a while until it's being transferred to the device, and in a moment you will see it running on the display. Now as for the storage space, this display already includes the SD card in the size of 128 megabytes that's being already populated inside the enclosure, because you cannot open the enclosure easily. The advantage is of course that you have much more space for all the video files, and most of the time you don't really have to care about the storage space, although at some point you would want to go into the SD card video, refresh the storage, and maybe delete some of those unused video files. Team editing is very similar to the 5 inch display, except for the preview is being round, so even when the background image or the background video is of course rectangular, it's being cropped into the shape of the circle, so you can see how it will look like on the actual display. There is also one specialty for the round display, and that's displaying the analog clock, so we have few of those themes that display the clock, together with some other information, and I really like how they look like. Let's talk about how you can mount those displays inside your PC case, or how you can simply put those on your table. One way is to use stickers, and all the displays include a double-sided tape. For the round display, the sticker is also round. The new 5-inch display has also the screw on the back of the enclosure, and comes with this bracket, so you have more options how to mount it. If you want to simply put the display on the table, there is a 3D printed stand included. It's definitely not the best, but you have the adjustable angle, and it does the job. So that's the short overview of all those displays, and perhaps help you decide whether you should buy any of those displays or not. If you still have any questions, please put those down in the comment section, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks, and bye.